Today we're gonna to play the tightest golf course I've ever played in England. I'm gonna film every single shot, talk you through each shot. I'm gonna try and beat two under. We're gonna try and get to three, four, five. It's quite a breezy day, so I'm not sure if that's gonna be that easy. But yeah, it should be fun. Almost fell over for some reason, but that's a one. A 196, and I'm pretty sure that's just straight back into, yeah. So what we're gonna try and do to take off a bit of this six iron is just hold up a little fade. Just starting sort of left side of the green, just trying to get it to come back towards that flag. It's gone Scottish. Pretty juicy. Before I hit this, I'm just getting a feel. I'm trying to feel what the grass is like, how loose it is, how deep it is. And then from there, base a decision, sort of like put the club down behind the ball as well. See how much ground there is underneath un, underneath it. And because it is pretty fiery, I'll be trying to land this with a bit of height and just on the green. Just come out right. It's actually really soft as well. It's a little swinging from the left. Yeah, like a cup outside the left edge. Good pace. Let's try and get to one. Great. One foot short is always, um, Nice and positive. It's getting to that time of year we can start playing those low flat ones. But this shot right here with the driver I call the Camborn Swinger. She got three thumbs with the extra one. She gets on top of it, hits it out flat. Oh, oh that's gonna go a long way. Oh. This got over the hill, chased down through the fairway. This has gone a long way. We're gonna get a yardage for this one. Got about 100 yards. So the Camborn Swinger went 352. This is probably like four or five uphill, 103, downwind 100. But the biggest thing is the rough is quite juicy and it gets thick behind it. It's gonna come out with no spin and flyery. So I'm trying to almost feel like an 80 shot here because long is not good. Just trying to open the face a little as well. Trying to offset that closage, feel 80. That could be pretty good. Go on, release. If you've got a flag that's in the middle or towards the back and you've got a fly a lie that you're not quite sure whether it's going to jump or it's going to come out a little dead, you just always got to err or err. Err on the, uh, I don't even know if that's a scent. You've got to err on the side of caution and just play it out there sort of predicting you're going to get a flyer because if you don't and you do get a flyer, these things can be just like card records sometimes. Because look at this, I've left myself, well, like 15 foot up the hill. Now long is not really a good miss. If it does sort of like land past pin eye, hits the fringe, which is pretty firm and it's flyery with no spin, like you could easily end up in the hedge. So just err on the side of caution. Try and actually think what the saying is. It's not err, <laughs> what am I on about? Something on the side of caution. Why can't I think of what it is? It's looking good out here. It's looking really good here, Bobby. This is not a bad leave, really. Under the hole, it's gonna sort of break a bit to the left. Just gonna give this like two, two to two and a half cups. Just give it enough pace to at least get it to the hole. Mm. Well, it's a good read. It's just not enough pace, but when putts are uphill like that, and you get, sometimes it's easy to get slightly aggressive. And if you do get aggressive and knock yourself like, you know, four foot by, then you've got a tough putt down the hill. And it can be like one of those very frustrating, stupid giveaway bogeys. Yeah, there's a saying that goes, 99% of putts that are short don't go in. It's sort of like a joke. But the thing is, if you adopt that mentality where you're thinking, I've got to get it by the hole, every single time. It's probably not gonna be that helpful, like long-term, because if your main concern is to get the putt by the hole, to give it a chance, as you say, then likely you're just gonna be hitting putts too hard. If you're always trying to hit it at the correct pace, say like a foot by, there's gonna be times when you leave a putt short, and what you're doing by trying to hit the ball a foot by consistently, you're trying to get pace control, where you can predictably read greens, because you're always trying to get it like a foot by. There's gonna be times when from like 25 foot, you leave it like two inches short of the hole. It's absolutely fine. Like in the long run, you've got more chances of holding putts if you hit it at the correct pace. Whereas if you try and whack it by every time, yeah, I got it by the hole. Well done, you're five foot. You're gonna free putt more 
and it's going to be harder for the ball to actually go in the hole anywhere apart from the center and also just trying to read greens is going to be harder because you haven't got a consistent pace it's just oh, i got it by so we've got 206 uphill into the breeze pins back left so it's sort of like a dead pin to go at so what i'm trying to do is start this right side of the green with a little draw not all out five just one that's sort of like flighted down a bit Oh my. Right, what I've just hit there is not a very good golf shot. It's dead. It's dead. So ball's here. I've got a lot of this thick, juicy rough to get over. And then we've got a downhill surface, which is pretty firm. Especially look at the grass that you're potentially hitting into. Like this stuff here, just this like rough cut is, um, is pretty juicy. It's definitely one of those situations where just try and make a bogey from here. This is not where you try to pull a miracle shot out the bag, leave yourself short with a tough up and down for bogey. Based on that, the lie is not too bad, it's sort of sat down. I'm trying to land this right on the edge of the fringe line to the green. If it's slightly short, it's gonna end up on the fringe. If it's long, it's gonna end up with an uphill putt. If somehow I pull this off, it will get close, but I'd say that's my biggest margin for error with a bit of loft. I mean, it's just got the <laughs> biggest kick. That was actually quite nicely played. This is now, you know, it's not a gimme two putt for sure, because it's, it's uphill quite a bit and it's not a 30 foot, but so we're gonna play this like two, three cups outside the right edge and just really focus on pace. If anything, just trying to leave this just short of the hole. Three hundred twenty-three yard par four. This one is an interesting hole. Like I could obviously get there with driver. OB is anything on the road or over the road. I've got a lot of bunkerage. Right is a pretty tricky up and down. You've got a tree here, which also guards the green. Like the margin for error if you're hitting driver is extremely small. So first thing I'm doing is checking the pin location, which is far enough on that I can access this from 100 yards. Okay, got 109. It's a pretty good spot. All right, lie. The greens are pretty firm, so we're just trying to play sort of like a 100 shot. Just left of it. Wow, that's firm. Any steeper. Yes, that's good. Slightly outside left edge. come back three birdies needed the second short par four in the row is around 280 it's about 240 250 to carry the trap i'm going to try and land this just over the bunker and get it releasing up onto the green so i've got two on just trying to feed it through the gap oh it's just slide it slightly right get lucky um, not sure if that is any good now I've got to play low under these trees, under the branches. Pin's in a good spot, but yeah, it's gonna to be tough to try and get a birdie putt from here. Live's not too bad, bit of grass behind it. It's gonna come out pretty hot. It's gotta probably land around here, in this bit. Back of stance with 53. I mean, there's so many things that can make this go offline, but we're gonna try and land this sort of like three yards short of the green. And there's a huge, huge slope as well so it's got to aim like at that stone that you can see behind it just right at that wow pretty happy with that very happy with that it's weird with the short game because obviously that's a part of my game that i've always struggled with if you've watched the channel you'll know that i mean it was only a few years ago I used to putt from literally 50 yards. But yeah, I just tried to take some sort of like freedom and creativity into the short game as well. Like I went for a phase of constantly looking for technique to try and fix my short game because I just basically built up a load of anxiety in the short game. Got that anxiety, like that pre-shot anxiety. And yeah, my technique may have been the starting factor, but I don't think it was ever sort of that bad. It's probably the nerves that 
sort of like made it a lot worse. And then from there, I looked for technique. In looking for technique, I lost every bit of like artistic flair, I guess you would say. Like obviously, I literally had none for like a few years. But I became so tense with my short game because yeah, I struggled a bit and then avoided it, then looked for technique. And then it was just like, right, how can I put a strike on this without fatting it or yipping it? And then recently I went to the chipping area, sorry, this is a bit of a long story. I went to the chipping area at the golf club in Exeter. I just remember walking around and just throwing some balls down and just going, chip, just looking at it, chip. And every single one was struck. And I was like, it's gotta be just, it's gotta be more like nerves and anxiety. So I freed myself up, realized my technique wasn't actually that bad. And now I'm trying to really like see short game shots and then just execute them. Like there's a video where Tiger Woods talks about how he sees short game. And it's that way that he, and honestly, it's, amazing, it's like the best video on YouTube. Like he's with DJ and it's quite funny because Tiger's like, Yo, what you see here? And DJ's like, um, I just, hit it onto the green and it releases. But then Tiger's like, well, there's a slope there. So I'm just trying to put a little bit of draw spin on this to, to fight the slope. I'm just trying to hit this like spinny cutter. And that kind of feel and, and thinking has like helped me quite a lot. I don't know if you can sort of like make anything of that for your own games. Get in. But right, that's one of three. I appreciate that was quite a long rant, but rant? Speaking like Graham Hancock. That was quite a long rant, but I find that stuff interesting. If that interests you at all, just let me know in the comments. We've got a sweeping dog leg. Breeze is like in off the left. You know what the shot is here. I'm not gonna say it out of respect for the fact that there is a lady present a couple holes away. The low sting and draw of a six iron. It's, uh, it's that shot. Leave a comment if you know what it is. And that was dirtiest of the dirties. Okay, one, three, six, uphill. Into breeze off the left. Just sort of see like a 145 shot with the nine iron. Just trying to like, like a little knockdown cut. Cut, cut. When people say, I'm hitting a little bleeder in there, meaning a fade. Is it called a bleeder? Because it's a cut and a cut bleeds. Yeah, you probably wouldn't say this was uh, the type of putt that you'd sort of like give a good go. Yeah, this thing is just going like handbrake turn right. Probably aiming like where the flag shadow is. Sort of like the bottom half of that. And just good pace up over the hill. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. Did not expect to hold that. So the green is here. And what we're trying to do is hit a low cut, just up around the tree line over some rocks that are about here and just give it a chance. Right is better than left. Left of the green, it slopes down and it's dry and firm and just right, you like be on the high side. It will either come in or stay up there. that off the toe. Right, we're gonna have to get lucky now. What is that? We're gonna re-tee and try it again. So, same shot. Yeah, we've got to knock on the green. That looks good. Yeah, we're sat down in the rough here. So it's got to play a little explosion shot. Try and pop this one up. Oh, disappointing, but can hold this, birdie the next two. The only shot you're getting close to the green is the rope-a-dope. Starting sort of like over this path, low running hook down the hill, and we've got a chance of getting near. 370. I'm telling you this will not be, will not be far away. There it is, 64. Yeah, but just keep that a bit further right. That's probably getting on the green. Mr. 
Middle cup, good pace. Yes. Yeah, really good hole this. Really good, strong finishing hole. Four, three, two, uphill. I'm trying to hit a three iron stinger just right of the rock and hold it just left of the bunkers. Or a little draw. Always just like gone up on this rough stuff. It's caught it. It's not gone very far. I've probably got like 200 to the flag down there. And like all this is like rock hard and bouncy now. So not really much chance, but I'm going to just leave the tripod here. The audio is going to disappear, but you should see a ball landing like in and around there. That's it. It's going to go like a couple cups outside. Give this a chance. <laughs> right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm actually on the road for the next three days filming some content, Brockenhurst and the Shire. Got some interesting guests. So if you want to subscribe, make sure you do that now. Uh, yeah, check the content coming next few days. Cheers in.